Hey, fam. Um, we're just going to jump right into an NFL playoff Super Wild Card weekend uh, this weekend, um, January 14th, 2023. The first game we're going to have kickoff is uh, Seattle visiting the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Um, that game's going to be 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. And this is going to be the number seven seed Seattle Seahawks, nine and eight, versus the number two seed 49ers, 13 and four. With uh, Brock Purdy at the helm, and Geno Smith will be quarterbacking for the uh, San Francisco or for the uh, Seattle Seahawks. This is uh, going to be this game could go two ways: a blowout, or it could be tight, come down nail biter. You know, I look for the Seahawks to cover in this game. I think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be a battle. Um, Purdy's first playoff game. I think he's going to have some jitters, but I think he's going to end up working it out. I think the San Francisco 49ers end up winning this one, you know, somewhere in the, in the ballpark, 24, 21, 23, 21, something like that. Like right in there, man, just something really close. I think there will be some points. Um, Geno Smith finished the season, the regular season, with 4,282 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, a passer rating of 100.9. Um, so he was over 100 in passer rating. Um, this, for Geno, is going to be his game to where he has to really, really try to cement the Geno Smith legacy, because let's just say thus far, he has not done that. He had an okay regular season. They finished above 500, 9 and 8. Um, you know, his best game of the year, he threw for 367, three tutties, and I think he had one interception and a passer rating of like 117, 116. Um, that was his best game versus Carolina, and that was back on December 4th, so not long ago. Um, so Gino, he's getting about due for another game, so let's see what he can do in the playoffs. Um, as far as the Seahawks, I haven't covered them that much this season, so I really don't have intimate knowledge of uh, things going on in that locker room or anything like that. I don't, I'm not 1000%. I'm just looking at it statistically and I'm going to go ahead and say the 49ers will probably hammer down considering they have um, Brock Purdy, uh, 1,374 yards, 13 touchdowns, four interceptions, 107.3 passer rating since he's came in. So, I feel that he's played a lot better than Jimmy G and Trey Lance and all that in his volume of work. We've seen him now for several weeks. You know, he he really seems like he knows how to guide a team and keep a team spirits up and keep a team fighting. And he um, has led the 49ers. They're 13 and four. I mean, come on. They have a great defense. I mean, come on. Their defense is stellar. I mean, one of the best in the NFL. Um, you have Christian McCaffrey. Um, he was ninth in the NFL on attempts with 244, eighth in yards, uh, like almost 1,200 yards. I think it was like 1139. Um, also, he was 12th in the NFL in touchdowns with eight as a running back there. Um, he averaged about 4.7 yards a carry, which is 18th in the NFL. I don't like that. Um, but he can be dynamic. They have a couple dynamic players in Samuels and McCaffrey who can run the ball, who can catch the ball, who can do it all, which is going to be really hard for the Seahawks to defend that and then also to overcome that defense that they have there with the 49ers. Um, they have a lot to overcome. I don't see the Seahawks being better in any category, any phase of the game. Um better than the 49ers. I don't think they're better special teams. I don't think defensively, offensively, they're just not to that level. Um, Seahawks, great year. Geno Smith, great story. Love seeing him getting out of where he was at the beginning of his career and now really coming and playing well, playing good. And I'm really happy for Geno Smith in this. And, and I'm glad that he's going to get to start a playoff game here. And let's, there's a chance that he could get a win, but I'm going to go with San Francisco in um, a close one. I think it's not going to get a blowout or anything like that, but I think San Francisco could hang up, you know, 24 points. Um, Seattle, they may score, you know, a couple tutties against that defense. I don't know, though. That's going to be the thing here. I'm not sure. But I do think that the 49ers come out on top. There's just too much there with the defense and too much with Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuels, Purdy playing good. So 
We're going to pick this game, 49ers, close game. I don't think that the Seahawks will cover the spread, but I think it'll be still close enough, and we'll see at the end of the game if the numbers tell the tale of the game. Sometimes they don't. You know, there's garbage time and things like that. But um, Seattle, they're going to have their hands full with uh, the 49ers. So let's pick that. 49ers, close game, winner. Moving on to the next week in the playoffs. And uh, I think this might be the year for the 49ers to get back to that to that spot, to, to that, to that situation to where you have their head coach who lost, who lost that Super Bowl and was winning and they should have won that Super Bowl and they let it get away from them. Let's see if Kyle Shanahan could get back to the, to the holy land of the Super Bowl and let's see if he can go ahead and really stamp his name on this NFL season. Let's see. Um, moving on. Um, wild card weekend at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC. The Sunday night game. We have the number five seed Chargers versus the number four seed Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, these two teams couldn't be further apart at the beginning of the season in terms of um, statistics, in terms of uh, wins and everything like that. But Doug Peterson has done a fantastic job to get these Jacksonville Jaguars to a record of eight and eight AFC champion or AFC South champions. That's big. Doug Peterson, coach of the year? Maybe. I think so. I mean, come on. He's really turned that place around. And excuse me one second. I'm going to close my door here. But anyway, back to um, what we're talking about. Um, the Chargers, they're led by Herbert, Eckler, Allen. Um, last game, um, Herbert didn't have a great game. Or he did have a great game. He was 25-37, 273, two tutties, zero interceptions. Great game, great game. Um, you had Austin Eckler. Or, yeah, you had Austin Eckler. He had 11 carries, 34 yards, 3.1 average, four catches, 36 yards. I didn't watch that game. So I'm not sure if they were just trying to conserve Eckler or if they were just really stuffing him. The, the uh, You know, if they were really putting the hammer down on him and keeping him under wraps. But he did have um, four catches for 36 yards also. So you're looking at almost 70 all-purpose yards, which is a, a workable thing for um, a running back and gives you a little bit, um, you're not so one-dimensional. And oh my Lord, Keenan Allen coming on at the right time, a buck oh two, eight catches, two tutties in his last game in the regular season. And now they're coming in here as the number five seed looking to wreak some havoc. I like the Chargers. They have the best young arm in the league in Justin Herbert. The best. That boy can throw the ball something out. He is good throwing the ball. He throws people open. He can read defenses. He's very intelligent, and he's very athletic. Um, I feel like their coach kills him. Staley kills him sometimes, and I'm just not a big fan of him, man. I'm just not. I feel like... He, last year, whenever he could have beat the Raiders and kept the Steelers out of the playoffs, you know, he, he did some really dumb things and goes for it on fourth down a little bit too much and tries to play more of the um, metric game here and find out, like, different stats and figure things out. I, I, I just don't like it. I don't know. I'm more of a feel-type player. Um, as a feel-type player, or a feel-type if I were coaching as a fee, I would feel how the game's going and just play it out like that. You can feel these things. Sports is all feel, energy and feel. And it's not about always the X's and O's. It is a lot. I mean, you have to study. You have to film study. You really have to focus. You have to know what the other team's going to do. But by God, if you feel it, you feel it. And now I've played some sports, and when I felt it, I felt it. I mean, it was just different. And I feel that the, the Chargers might be a little bit much for Trevor Lawrence and company. Um, Trevor Lawrence this season has really come on, started throwing people open, really started being able to go through his progressions. Um, ETN, he had nine carries for 108 yards and a tutty. Um, three catches, 32 yards in their last game. That's big. That's really big. Um, 
But we're going to look at this game right here. The number five seed versus the number four seed. Typically, there isn't too much um, of a gap in between that four and five seed. But in this case, I really feel like the Chargers are a step or two ahead. Because they've been building now for a few seasons. A couple seasons since they've gotten Justin Herbert. So... They're a little bit farther ahead in the progression. The Jaguars, I like them next season to really wreak some havy, havoc and uh, own the AFC South next year with Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence, and company. I feel that that's going to be something that uh, really, really, really will be uh, something to watch. So, um, good luck to these two teams. Uh, this is going to be another one that I don't think is going to be too far apart, man. I feel like it might be a little bit of a shootout. I am. Um, I like the defense of the Chargers. Um, Jacksonville, yeah, kind of. I like them, their defense. But I feel that if the Chargers can go ahead and get that initial first score and get up on them, I feel like they'll be able to keep that throughout the game and keep that energy. Um, I do think it's going to be a close game. Um, the Chargers should watch out if they give that ball back to um, Lawrence and it's a, a one-score game and he got a couple minutes. I feel like he can move that team, that Jaguars team down and uh, really um, make it a game and put it into overtime or maybe even win and be uh, a Cinderella type story of the AFC side of the playoffs. Um, I do think, though, the Chargers will win the game in a close game. So we're going to go with that, guys. Um, Chargers to win in a close one, Niners to win in possibly a close one, but that one's kind of hard to call because it is the playoffs, folks, and you never know what can happen. You never know. So let's uh, watch and support the NFL. Um, this past weekend was great, so we had a lot of close games, but um, these two to kick off the weekend on Saturday on Super Wild Card Weekend, you couldn't have two better games, in my opinion. Four teams that could really, really put on a show. So, thanks guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share, do all those things. I'm really trying to build a community here. And um, really trying to uh, think of ways to involve the fans. I need to get up to uh, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours so I can do live events. Um, so I can take questions and do that type of thing. I'm learning a lot about YouTube as I go here. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. Come back, like, subscribe, share. Jason Jacobs, all sports, all the time. That's what we do.